Thanks, everyone. And uh, we're going to be talking this today about active learning. Okay? Um, just to remind you that uh, you will receive a certificate of participation and a workshop handout, a uh, webinar handout in the next few days. Um, if you don't receive it, please email me at formazione.mlaworld.com. Um, I'll get that to you as soon as I receive your email. Um, let me know if there's any other ones that you haven't received in the past as well. Um, the webinar does involve all the important information from this uh, workshop. So um, don't worry, we won't send you the slides, but we'll send you something better, which is the handout. It also has uh, more information, all the information that we have, but also a lot of useful links and uh, uh, things that you can use in your classes. Okay. Um, as we're going to be talking about active learning, let me just tell you that uh, you know, I'm sure we all want to make our lessons more involving, interactive, and meaningful. So we have the the, the image there shows that uh, you know if we have the motivation by the students and some active learning uh, methods, then we're really going to be able to engage the students in whatever we're trying to teach them. Okay, active learning is a concept, as we'll see today. Um, that seeks to encourage students to engage in the learning process and take ownership of their learning. So it's a way of, you know, it's a theme of these webinars in general that we're trying to involve the students, um, make the lessons more engaging, more relevant for them. And by using active learning techniques, we can actually maybe even let the students guide us and give us ideas about how um, they prefer to learn and how they prefer to uh um, the, the topics they want to learn, so the methods and the, the topics, the, the uh, grammar points, things, how they find, how feed, getting feedback from them about learning. Um, I'll hand over to Becky for the objectives. Thanks, Josh. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. So by the end of this session, teachers will be better able to incorporate active learning into their English lessons and adapt traditional texts and materials which maybe aren't so motivational to make them more involving and engaging to students. Mm. I notice Sylvia says that uh, motivation does make a difference, I think, especially with teenagers. And it's a, you know, it's, it's, we're not promising that we'll be able to get all the students involved and motivated in every lesson you do. But uh, one of the things that active learning looks at is it involves a lot of feedback from your students. And so at least if you can get some useful feedback, then, you know, you can see where, what things might engage your students a bit more. Obviously, there may be some who, you know, we, we really can't reach. Um, but, uh, you know, we can do our best. Okay. Um, so you're probably asking what is active learning, okay? Active learning means students are actively involved in the learning process. So we're talking about things that we often talk about in these webinars, but uh, small group work, instead of sort of uh, just getting everyone to, to speak together, we're putting them in small groups. We're doing things like role plays or simulations, okay? data collection and analysis, not in a statistical way, but in the sense that we can get students to um, do surveys amongst their friends or um, classmates and look at those, okay? We've done a few of these in, in other webinars too, these uses of surveys, okay? Um, reading, writing, and problem solving. So obviously it still involves the, the four main skills, okay? But we are orientating it towards a sort of problem solving, okay? Um, some key studies into active learning include the following, okay? I'm not necessarily recommending you, you read these, although you can find them online, okay? But uh, just to give you an idea about what it's based on, okay, we have uh, Bonwell and Eisen who wrote this thing, Active Learning, Creating Excitement in the Classroom. Okay? It's primarily focused on university education, so it may not be absolutely relevant to uh, teachers who are teaching in middle or high school or elementary school. Okay? But uh, it really, this is the article that started it all, or at least popularised it all, you really emphasise problem-solving tasks being incorporated into university lectures instead of these sort of uh, teacher or professor-focused lectures. 
it got the students actually doing things and uh, acknowledge that when you do active learning, you are taking a risk. Okay? Will students step up to the challenge? Every time you give students a challenge, there's the possibility that it will fall flat. Okay? Um, and there's also the possibility that the teacher will lose control of the class, you know, um, whether that means in a disciplinary sense or you lose sort of focus. Mm -hmm. okay? But, um, I mean, you know, it, we'll see some ways to to look out for this and to, to plan some activities. We've got some activities planned that you can use in your classes. The second one that I think uh, you might find interesting is one a bit more recent. Uh, Wallace, uh, Prather, Milson, Johns and Mann. And as you can see from the title, students taught by a first-time instructor using active learning teaching strategies outperform students taught by a highly regarded traditional instructor. So what they're sort of saying here is that maybe um, teachers, uh, you know, all of us get a bit set in our ways, okay? and uh, even someone new to the teaching uh, sector might be able to use these methods and really make the knowledge retain. Okay? Um, as I said, you know, the title really explained it. Um, again, it's based on courses in a university physics department, but, uh, you know, I think they're generalizable. Okay? Um, mm -hmm. As I said, you know, these are sort of some things to consider about where the term comes from. Okay? Um, there's this uh, based on Edgar Dale's cone of experience. Okay? Um, I'm not sure, to be honest, if you really want to take this as a uh, uh, real statistics, but it's a nice thing to uh, um, to think about is that, you know, when you give students things to read or hear or see, okay, um, you know, you're, you're talking about passive learning, okay, and they don't retain as much, okay, even when they see and hear it together, okay, but when you're involving these sort of productive skills, okay, saying and writing, and if you're giving them actions to do, activities to do, that is, they have to research it, they have to um, uh, make a summary, they have to present it to others. And to be honest, this is very much like um, NLA's task based mm -hmm. okay? um, That That's when you get them retaining a lot more. Okay? So on the left, you can see these are what the students retain okay, or remember, but what they're able to do, you know, the actions that they do, and things like analysing, defining, creating and evaluating. Okay? I mean, I think we all know this, that uh, once we've got students really doing actions, it's much better than just giving them a list of grammar. Okay? Um, so... Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> Another point, Josh. Yep. Some of those skills uh, students can use further down the line. So depending on what they want to do in the future, being able to analyze text or evaluate will help them um, in much more of their lives than just one English lesson. Very much. In fact, that's a really good point that um, active learning is not just about uh, learning the grammar, learning the vocabulary, but it's about, you know, realizing and, and actually asking the students about how they intend to use the language in the future, okay? And also thinking ahead that maybe they don't even know, maybe no one knows, you know, that, uh, you know, the world that they're going to be working in or, you know, having holidays in English-speaking countries in is not going to be the world of today, okay? Yeah. So we really need to to consider that, you know, what the, the world we grew up in is not the world that the students will be growing up in. And so their their needs are going to be different. Absolutely. Um, I'd just also like to thank Sylvia because she's written in the chat an interesting magazine that she'd like to recommend, Modern mm -hmm. English Teacher. So it's by teachers for teachers. So thank you very much for that, Sylvia. If anyone wants to make a note of the link. Yeah, great. I'll have a look at that myself. Yeah. So why active learning? Apart from what seems to be the empirical positive results of active learning, the method as we've said, also encourages students to take responsibility for their learning, meaning that the attainment of knowledge is a process. 
So the teacher works as a facilitator. So we guide the students during their lessons, but all the learning is dependent on the student. Using active learning, it will be clear at times which students are progressing, maybe some who need a bit more help. Um, so that's also a good way of, you know, seeing who might need extra support. Students are also demonstrating their learning by taking part in the activities and they'll be encouraged to express themselves if they feel that they have not been well prepared for the activities. Yeah, so I mean, we're always taking a bit of a risk by giving students, you know, the opportunity to criticise our methods or, you know, say what they don't understand, what they found difficult. But, um, you know, sometimes these risks are worth taking. Mm -hmm, definitely. Active learning also gives students motivation to learn. So as again, Sylvia mentioned earlier, I think that's key in active learning. The tasks used should be enjoyable in themselves. Um, as Josh mentioned at MLA, we use a lot of, well, we use task-based learning. So we have lots of surveys, role plays, uh, presentations where students work together. And as long as the students are enjoying themselves, it pays off. So the risk is worth taking. If you're uh, interested in what we're talking about, uh, task-based learning, we do have uh, two webinars coming up next month on task-based learning. So uh, we're going to be giving you a lot more information about that. These are the methods that we use both uh, online in our lessons and in our MLA centres. In our centres. Okay? Yeah. And uh, so, you know, they, they do involve active learning. So again, with this, the students associate learning with fun and mm. then they kind of forget that they're doing a lesson. Um, and obviously in this way, they express themselves much more in English as they will likely do in their future lives. Mm. So how can English lessons use active learning? So some commonly used active learning activities are, as Josh mentioned, pair or small group or class discussions and changing the size of the group will encourage different interaction types you could have pair work and then put that into a bigger group and then from that have a full class discussion just to get the students used to discussing with different sizes um, and people with different opinions too yeah and I mean it gives the students it, it's always good to keep them on their toes moving between pairs, small groups, uh, full class, as, you know, these are the sort of interactions they're going to be using English in their future, you know, whether it's, um, you know, having a small conversation, talking to the group, maybe even do a, doing a presentation, mm -hmm. a full work. Debates are fantastic, especially with higher levels, I'd say. Um, and usually what I tend to do is I force my students to argue against their own point of view. This encourages them to really incorporate language and to widen their vocabulary. Yeah, and not again, only make it fun. Yeah, obviously these are things that I, I think a lot of these anyway are really good things, whether we're using them in English or in, uh, in other types of uh, uh, studying other things. But, uh, you know, a debate is all very well if someone wants to defend uh, their own point of view that, for example, you shouldn't put pineapple on pizza, okay? But, you know, it could be fun to try to get the students to argue for it, okay? Or, you know, find out, everyone puts up their hands, maybe you can get a issue um, that, that divides the class and, mm -hmm. you know, they think they're going to be arguing for their point Maybe they can even prepare an argument for their point and then you swap them. Okay? Give the arguments that they've prepared to the other group and they have to use those. Okay? Yeah. It can be uh, really fun because it, you know, they're going to be used to, they're, they're going to be certainly more comfortable with the vocabulary, with the, 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 the points that they are going to that represent their points of view. Okay? But swapping them over, you know, gets them uh, thinking, you know, and, I mean, the other groups will be doing that too. So it doesn't mm -hmm. put one group at an advantage. Yeah. 
Another thing we include a lot in our lesson is role plays. So acting and participating in discussions or dialogues gives students the opportunity to experience these interactions, which they may well come into contact with in their future lives. Yeah, sure. Brainstorming. Although actually now it's politically incorrect in the UK to call it a brainstorm, uh, we have to call them mind maps. Okay. Um but this allows you to draw on students' prior knowledge and gives them an opportunity to contribute to the lesson. Because if they feel like they're helping, they feel valued and they want to participate even more. Yep. One of my favourites. How many things have you learned from your students, Josh? Uh, yeah, I think I've learned everything. I think sometimes uh, I should be paying them. Yeah. Um. So yeah, turning the tables, getting your students to teach you, uh, either by researching a topic or something that they know very well and presenting it to the class, again, makes them feel like they're part of something and they take ownership for their learning. You know, and this is not necessarily in the sense that, I mean, it could be if you wanted, you know, you get them to, to, to research a grammar point or vocabulary and things like that, but maybe even things that you don't know anything about. Mm -mm. Okay, which we'll have a look at later. There is some topics that you can say, okay, you need to research this and present. You won't be able to know if it's true or not, but I mean, you're probably going to get a good idea if they're actually, they have done the research. Okay? Yep. Another one, think, pair, share. So maybe you could give um, a student a grammar rule from several examples. So the student prepares the examples and their partners have to understand and see if their views match or differ and try and figure out which grammar point it is. Um, again, you could change the pairs um, just to see if, again, their views are the same or opposing. Mm. Another one. Gosh, how many points did we put down, Josh? Yeah, um, Quite a lot. We're going to be looking at a few of these in, uh, in more detail. Giving you some examples of them and some tasks yeah. that you can do. So I think a good one, especially for teachers, is something called the muddiest point. So you take maybe 10 minutes at the end of the lesson and get your students to reflect on a part of the lesson they found unclear or confusing. This gets them to reflect on their learning on the topic in question and also provides feedback to the teacher. Um, so you can then understand how to tailor your lessons in the future to tackle the issues better and make sure that everybody understands it well. And three-step interviews. Um, so this is really good for working on students' speaking, listening and writing skills. It's a cooperative learning strategy. And what they do, in essence, is they quiz each other, sharing their thoughts and also taking notes. So one person will be the interviewer, one the interviewee, and the other one the reporter. And they take turns in maybe five minute slots, asking each other questions and swapping roles. So this also applies them, helps them to apply different questioning strategies, reflect on their understanding of the topic and also collaborate in their groups as they take on each role. And similar to the muddiest point, so again, more feedback for the teacher, we have a one sentence summary. So this allows students to use high order thinking skills to condense their language into one sentence. So kind of to sum up what they've learned in that one lesson. Um, we might find this at the end of the webinar. We'll yeah. See. So maybe the, the, all the participants can uh, be thinking about a, a one sentence to, to sum up the webinar. Yeah. yeah. It also helps improve memory too because they have to recall what they've done. Hmm. Um, we're going to be looking at, uh, as we talked about before, the think, pair, share. Okay? So one idea we had is uh, who or what is France's greatest contribution to the world? I didn't want to put Italy because maybe that's too obvious. That mm -mm. Things, but uh, you know, I don't want to say France is less than Italy, but uh, you know, maybe it's a bit harder. 
Okay, it's something you maybe haven't considered before. I'm not, you know, I want one thing. Okay, I don't want sort of culture or literature or food. Okay, but tell me something if it is, you know, a person. Okay, um, so what you could do, and this is an activity you could do with your students. I mean, it doesn't mean that you're concentrating on France. It's just an example of. Mm -hmm. Something to get students thinking although you could obviously swap this out with something that you are you know if you're studying the victorian era you could do the victorians okay if you're doing uh uh i don't know the 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 celts or something like this the romans okay? um what you do is put this question out okay take a minute to think about this question quietly okay some things to consider are how does this thing, the thing you're talking about, okay, whether it's, I don't know, the... The uh, French Boston, baguette. A baguette, okay, whether it's Napoleon, whether it's, I don't know what else, okay? I think that's all France has, really, okay? Um, how does it benefit mankind, okay? Is it an unalloyed good or does it have negative aspects? So, you know, talking of Napoleon, okay, I'm sure, you know, a lot of people don't consider him a hero like uh, often the French do. Okay? Um, and then how how does your choice compare to your partner? So okay, this you will do a bit in a second, but uh, you know, when you're going so could you imagine what maybe other people would consider? Okay? So obviously not everyone's going to come to the same conclusion. Okay? So you think about it quietly, maybe make some notes. They okay. also consider what other people might be proposing. Okay. And then an interesting thing is, would you be willing to change your mind or do you still maintain that yours is the best? So consider this first. You know, on a rate on a rating of one to ten, how confident are you that you're going to be able to convince or at least, you know, not necessarily convince to change your mind, but at least convince your partner that this is uh, a good choice, you know, and it's it's often a good way to get students really um, to, to take this seriously, or at least you can see how serious they're taking it. Okay? So whether this is a minute or five minutes, okay, but some time to think, okay, now they find a partner and discuss this for five minutes. Obviously, we're trying to get them in English, so you can, uh, you know, one way sometimes to do do this obviously is put them in pairs and uh, make sure you're circulating. Mm -hmm. Another way sometimes I've found is even uh, seat them a little bit far from each other, you know, a meter or two meters from each other, okay? and they've actually got to, you know, actively listen. Yeah, and you can walk between the two rows, okay? and there you might be a bit more noise. They might have to talk over other people, but it's very clear when they're not speaking English. Okay? How does your choice compare to your partner? So get them to compare them. Um, are, is, is one of the students or both of them willing to change their mind? Again, you know, learning is all about changing your mind. Okay? So it doesn't necessarily mean you, know, you have to, but um, at least you need to, to open your mind to, to consider others' ideas. Okay. Now tell us about your discussion. So you can bring them back into the class as a whole, okay? Or maybe those so those two people could uh, present to each other. You know, they can have some time to to prepare a a presentation of their point of views. And uh, did they agree on one of them? Did they agree to disagree? Okay. Maybe they can even say the pros of their partner's choice. So consider, you know, even though they might not agree with their partner, what were the strongest points their partner made? Okay. What were the cons of your own? What were the things that you proposed and then you realised a bit later, maybe it wasn't the best argument okay, or the best choice? Okay? Um, please let us know in the chat if anyone's got an idea of France's greatest contribution to the world. Okay. Seems a bit bare. It's like uh, crickets out there, okay? but I'm sure there's uh, you know, it's it's a uh, they've got a lot of contributions. Okay? Um, another thing you could do, well, think about you know, what do students learn from this activity? Why are we doing an activity like this? Okay, 
what we've done is we've exposed their view to criticism in a low stakes situation. So we haven't got them standing up in front of the class and saying, you know, tell me in five seconds, what's the greatest thing about France? Okay? That's a lot of pressure and it's going to be difficult for people to, uh, um, you know, do this in front of everyone. Putting them in pairs, you know, giving them a bit of, let's say, anonymity in the sense that they're, not everyone's listening to them at the same time. They're just talking to one other person. Okay? They've exposed their criticism to their view to criticism in a low stakes situation. Okay? If they've made a really bad choice, it's not a problem. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, they've had the chance to share responsibility okay? while also contributing. So, you know, it's quite easy to change your point of view. If you haven't made a good choice, change it to the other persons and then you start agreeing or disagreeing about certain facts, okay? Um, it can encourage shy students. So the ones that uh, weren't so confident, weren't so confident in speaking, may be fine to adopt the other person's point of view, okay? Um, finally, you have the presentation to the group, which lets you see, okay, whether they've used their time wisely, okay? Again... Oh, very similar sort of things that we methods we use in our um, task based learning things. We give them a task, we present the task a little bit, we get them to um, uh, do a bit of introduction, uh, maybe some vocabulary. Then we put them in pairs or small groups and they work on the task and then they come back into the class and generally present it. Obviously, if you don't don't get round to this presentation this uh, this presentation part, is not really able to see whether it worked. Okay? Mm -hmm. In fact, Vita just asked how to evaluate this activity. To be honest, we're not looking for someone who comes up with the best contribution to, to, to humanity from France. That's not the point. The point is to see if they can, uh, if they manage to keep talking, if they uh, manage to present to the class. Mm -hmm. a good they communicate effectively. Yeah, and so, you know, this presentation at the end should be able to show you whether they've um, used their time wisely or not, okay? Some things you could use this. So, you know, France is just an example we've got, but you could ask students, what's the most difficult grammatical structure in English? Okay? This is if we're getting a little bit focused on English itself, okay? Um, what problems do you have when you speak English, okay? Roberta's got to leave us. No problems. Remember that all <laughs> the, these um, webinars are archived on our, on our uh, YouTube channel. So feel free to come in and uh, anything you miss or any other ones you've missed are always there. Okay. Um, what problems do you have when you try to speak English? And will English be useful to you in the future? And, you know, maybe, in fact, more than why. Oh, sorry, more than will it be useful, but why, okay, or how. How. In those sort of senses, you know, the students, um, you know, are coming up with uh, points that, to be honest, are not necessarily going to to contradict another student, okay? so that, you know, they're not going to be arguing over what really is the most difficult, but they're sort of looking between themselves and thinking, well, I consider this, okay? Um Becky's going to tell us a little bit about learning by teaching. Learning by teaching, yeah. <clears throat> I have to say lots of the um, participants said uh, they were talking about the French Revolution as one of the best things to come out of France. Yeah, I would say, you know, these ideas of freedom, certainly. Yeah, I think I would change my mind from a baguette after hearing that, actually. <laughs> but, yeah. but mind if I get one. Okay, I'll come on there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so learning by teaching. Um, this is by no means a new approach to learning. It was actually used way back in Roman times. No, excuse my Latin pronunciation, but the phrase docendo discimus, often attributed to the Roman Stoic philosopher Seneca the Younger in his letters to Lucilius, roughly translates to by teaching we are learning. In what scientists have dubbed the protégé effect, there we go, a bit of French there, student teachers score higher on tests than pupils who are learning only for their own sake. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so if you know you're going to be teaching this later, you're probably going to be uh, paying more attentive. attention yeah. you know, than if you're just learning it because you're curious or mm. because you're enrolled in this. Okay. So a good way of looking at it is it's time to turn the tables. Your students are going to teach you something. So you put the students in the driving seat and learn from them for a change. Put your feet up, teachers, you earned it. Mm. Okay, so you can put your students in either pairs or groups of three. Generally a good idea to keep the groups uh, quite small, small so yeah. that they have a bit more responsibility. Exactly. Um, so you give each group a topic card with a name of a lesser known town or city from the English speaking world. So Josh has kind of racked his brains Yep. to come up with these um let us know if you know any of them if you know where they are let us know if you know what's special about the first two okay. yeah mm -hmm. so if you know okay it's obviously there are many special things about the first two but uh what, a particular what? thing okay. relevant to this evening okay each group must then spend five minutes researching the town or city and then prepare a five-minute presentation to deliver to their peers. Things that must be included in this presentation are the location. Is it a coastal place? Is it inland by a river? The population of the place. Are there any particular sites? Is it well known for something in particular? Does it have any history? Uh, is it famous for anything that happened in the past? Yeah, if it's a new, as a lot of these places, for example, Canada, America, Australia, it might be quite recently founded. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, if it's a place in mean Ireland or uh, Scotland, or the, uh, in the UK in general, it may have a bit more, more of a longer history. Obviously, uh, you know, some of these places in uh, in what we might say the new world also have um, pre-European histories, you know, with native peoples. And any important people that may come from this place. Such as Scarborough and Perth. Yeah. <clears throat> we think, because we like challenging our students, that in this instance, Wikipedia should be banned. And of course, the search should be done on an English site and not just translated from the original language. Yeah, I think just, you know, it, it might be a bit too easy for them to just do this in, in two minutes if they they yeah. Wikipedia, you know. So, you know, it doesn't mean that there's not other sites that, that could be quite easy to use, okay. Um, but, uh, you know, Wikipedia, I mean, if they go there, they, they won't. You'll find everything in 30 seconds. Yes. Does anybody know, know anything? Yeah, let us know if you've been to any of these. Um, I tried to pick some that uh, maybe are not so well known, okay, but still important within their own uh, in their own country. Okay? These are not necessarily very small places. Okay? I mean, Pembroke, I don't think it's very big, but it's uh, it's one of the bigger ones in uh, bigger towns in Wales. Okay? Let us know in the chat. Okay, if you know anything about these, again, I, I'm not necessarily expecting you to. Okay, this is why I've chosen these. So the idea is that, uh, you know, if you assign those to your students, then you would be learning a little bit about it too. And so you can leave it up to the students. And, you know, it's going to be interesting when they present stuff to you. Okay? Mm -hmm. And they have also the, uh, how can I say, the, uh, the pleasure of being in the, the teaching seat, that you know, they're actually telling you something that you didn't know before. Okay. Um, you could also do this as a three-part interview. Okay. Sorry, not this, but another activity. Okay. You put students in uh, groups of three. Okay. As we talked about before, one of them is the interviewer, one's the interviewee, and the other is the note taker. Okay. Um, they have five minutes to interview about the following topic, your last holiday. Okay, something in this case quite easy that they'll all have something to say. Could be even their favourite holiday. Okay. 
holiday. Their most recent one wasn't their favorite. Okay. After five minutes, they swap roles. Okay. So you could say to everyone, the interviewer now becomes the interviewee, the interviewee now becomes the note taker, and the note taker now becomes the interviewer. Okay. So you can even put these as, as um, give each student a number, okay? mm -hmm. one, two, three in the group, and you just write the number differently on the board. Okay. Um, after five minutes, swap again. Okay. So now on the, on the second swap, it means that they've all um, that they all go into the, the, the role that they haven't done. Okay. Um, and the idea is that the students work on their listening skills as well as question formation and attention to detail while taking notes. Okay. So again, these sort of questions are, you know, was your journey simple and pleasant? Simple. Uh, was it a long, difficult journey? Okay. Where we talk about the journey in the sense of when they went from one place to the other to arrive in the destination. Okay. Had you been there before, or was this the first time? Okay. What did you see, eat, or do while you're there? So maybe some of these sort of questions, or maybe you don't even write up the questions. You even just put about, you know, your journey. Okay, first time. Okay, what did you or things you saw, things you ate, things you did, who with, okay, when, okay. These sort of things, you know, you can, depending on the level of the students, you can um, adapt it for, for many levels. I think you could even do mm -hmm. two low levels with this for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. If you give them an example of the sentence structure, yeah, yeah. no problem. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, you could even give them the questions, okay, and give them um, the structure of the answers. I went to, okay, I went there with, okay, things like that, you know. It's. I don't think we need to be worried about giving students, low-level students, language that they're going to be used. I think that's the real thing that they that they want to be able to do. Okay. Just coming to the end, maybe um we should reveal that uh, I'm from Perth and uh, Becky lives in uh, Scarborough. I believe. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, just outside okay. of Scarborough. Okay. So these are the two important people that uh, maybe your students don't know about, okay, but maybe they should, okay? I think um, they should. But uh, both beautiful places to visit, for sure, okay? Yeah. okay. Um, someone says, uh, Gaetano says a relative has been living in Perth for a very long time. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, lucky him or her, okay? Um, I'll hand over to Becky for the conclusion yeah so active learning is not just a teaching method but it's more a learning philosophy which empowers your students to take charge of their own learning and to, to develop the skills and competencies that they need and will need for the 21st century as josh mentioned the world that he grew up in just quite a while ago um is very different to the one that we all live in now and that's quite well, likely going to be the same <laughs> you did um active learning also fosters a positive and collaborative learning environment where students and teachers can learn from each other and share their experiences again yeah <clears throat> the world of today is not the world that students will start working in i dread to think how many more technological changes will happen between now and then but by using active learning with your students, you can help them anticipate the skills they will need for the future world of work. Yeah, I mean, getting them to sort of tell you what they they find important about, you know, it might surprise you mm -mm. why they're learning English or what they think they might be doing in the future or even what they do at the moment. You know, like I, I know a lot, a lot of my students um, have learned English from gaming, okay? That they uh they, they play video games and speak to people in English uh doing that it's certainly not what what I would have considered when I was younger. Mm -mm. And yes, as Josh mentioned, ask your students for feedback. Help get them to help you reflect on what you're teaching, um to see if the way that you're teaching has been effective, um, and quite likely you're probably already all using active learning without realizing it i mean if you've used some of the techniques and the methods that we've talked about in other webinars 
you're probably using active learning. Okay, this is an aspect we're focusing on today, okay, but uh, it's not really that we haven't focused on it before. We just haven't given a name to it. Okay, um, so uh, you know. Uh, anyway, thanks a lot for your attention. Okay. Uh, as I said, you will receive a certificate of participation and a webinar handout. Hey, we've got uh, some links there to to more information about uh, active learning in that. Hey? Um, next week, we're going to be talking about uh, preparing students for Cambridge B1 and B2 writing exams. Whether you're doing Cambridge exams or not, okay, I think it's still going to be useful if you ever want to teach uh, writing. Okay? I know we talked a little bit about uh, uh, you know, writing skills maybe not being so important in the future, uh, according to, you know, given that we have uh, chat GPT. Chat GPT. But I think still, you know, uh, preparing students for writing, at least now their assessments are going to be included. Okay? Yeah. So tune in for that and uh, let us know also, obviously, if you've got any uh, other ideas for webinars. Okay. Someone we did have one, yeah. I think Sylvia said debating, so I've made a note of that one. Thank you, Sylvia. Yeah, I think we could look at debating techniques. It's not the first time we've, uh, I think we've talked about debates in these, but we could mm -hmm. give you some more details about, um, you know, I'm sure Rebecca, who I'm sure has done debates in her lessons, um, yes. has some ideas about things to avoid, good ways to organise them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your comments as well. And thanks a lot to Becky. And, Thank you, uh, Josh. Hope to see you next week. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a lovely evening. Bye-bye.